Those kids been through so much, and for them to be so mature and really know what situation they're in is really awesome. Was there one kid in particular whose story has sort of stuck with you, that you brought home with you? Uh, it's, it's a few kids, man, but, uh, you know, it was, it was one kid named Malik out there in Jamaica. You know, I, he reminded me of myself. I have a competitor. I mean, he was challenging us, and I, mean, I know all of us didn't play soccer. He was challenging all of us, even though we were older and we we're 18. He was nine years old, ch challenging us. And I saw a lot of qualities in him that I saw, well, had in myself when I was younger. And uh, it was just real cool to see somebody in a different country that had the same qualities you had. When you think about that kid and the opportunities that maybe he won't have, yeah. how important was this trip to you all to maybe give those kids an op a, a, a glance at what's possible for them? You know, I mean, it's it's really it's it's hard to say. Like, tell those kids you can do this, you can do that. But when you, when you leave, you really don't know what they go through on a daily basis. So uh, it was just great for us to go out there and show them, like, if you do good at school, if you take advantage of all your opportunities, you can have a chance to go to a, a college and earn your degree and stuff like that. But just being able to share our love for our sports with those kids. And, uh, you know, out there, Lindsay Agnew, she plays soccer for us, and she was showing the girls how to play soccer out there. You know, the girls in those countries aren't really, are told that they can't do much, they have to stay in the house and stuff like that. Just her going out there and impacting the little girls and showing them that they can do what the boys can do is real. I thought it was real touching for uh, us. So culturally, this was an impact, this was an impact moment for you, I'm yeah. guessing, right? This is seeing, you've never been there, right? Yeah, never been there. So you're, this is probably seeing, did it open your eyes to what, you can value in America. Yeah, it opened my eyes to a lot of things, like just being able to walk into Woody and get a, a free water bottle. And, uh, everything that I have is clean for me at the Woody. Uh, if I want a pair of cleats, I can get it at any time, or a new pair of shoes, I can get it at any time. And those kids have one pair of shoes that they've had for three, four years, and when they grow out of, they don't know if they're gonna get another pair. So it's just awesome being able to touch their lives for this for this moment over the summer so hopefully next year that we can go back or another group of people can go back and do the same thing that we had done. Is this something you want to talk to your teammates about? Yeah, I'm, when I went back to the Woody, man, I'm trying to put a real emphasis on just not wasting things in there. You know, a football team, I can say there's a lot of wasteful things. Um, not being wasteful, but just not thinking about the small things. Uh, drinking all the way to the bottom of the, a bottle and like this much water left and throwing it away. You know, that much water could have um, like meant a lot to somebody over there in Jamaica, so, or anywhere in the world. So I just think you need to just worry on not throwing away important stuff. And what about wasted opportunities? Uh, wasted opportunities as well. You know, sometimes you see guys who come in and don't really know what situation they're in and how they could impact other children throughout the community. You know, we have a select few people that actually do community service, which is great, but you got to reach out to those who don't really know the impact that they can have on others' lives. So do a good job of getting community service throughout the whole team. When, when did you guys get back? Uh, Tuesday night. Was there, what's the first thing you told your friends and your family about the trip? Uh, first thing I told my, well actually my mom is, you know, in this world, there's two types of people, givers and takers, and uh, I'm, I'm going to try my hardest throughout the rest of my life to be a giver. You know, I, I've always given, but, you know, being in the situation I am as a Ohio State football player, we're giving so much, and so we have to take, 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 but you got to try hard in your life to give back. That's what I'm talking about. No, that's my first time out of the country. Um, and I guess like an addition to the charitable work you guys are doing, but just to be in the part of the world and see other people's life experiences, how valuable is that? It's, it's very valuable to be cultured. You know, I went over there and learned so much about uh, Rastafari. You know, the perception that we get as Americans is that we're rebellious. All they do is smoke. It's not dirty, but we actually went over there and met a Rastafari who lives off his land, doesn't eat any flesh. 
and all he talks about is peace. You know, it's, it's real impactful to get that perception about a different culture because we're, we as Americans are told one thing, and then when you told one thing, we just go, everybody else is going through. So just me, me being able to see it firsthand is real. Was real important. How did you get selected to go? Uh, I was selected through Sasso and uh, through my coaches, and also my teammate last year, Joshua Perry, went to Costa Rica, I think. And uh, he nominated me to go with the Jamaican team this year. What was it like to get to go with Billy, like another teammate, someone you're close with? You know, I, me and Billy weren't real close because he plays off offensive line, he's on offense. I mean, we're close as friends and as teammates, but I think this Jamaican, this trip to a Jamaican was so, so was really about me and Billy even closer together. You know, just me and him being out there sweating out there every day at 95 degree weather, uh, having to get through it together. I mean, I think that that really impacted our relationship as, as teammates. Also, was that like the the biggest, like I guess, physical shock, which is how hot it was there all the time? Yeah. Uh, or like, what was that having, like? Yeah, it was it was just hot, man. Every day, every time you stepped outside, uh, you just bigger guys. I don't know, other people who didn't really sweat as much, but bigger, the bigger we were, the more we sweat. Uh, it's going out to the beach and we start sweating also. So, I mean, you got to find a way to get get over it and just have fun. I wanted to ask you a football uh, question that's sort of related to this. This trip sort of signifies the start of your summer, and you guys who went to the NFL are gone. Yeah. It's sort of, this is officially now finally, you're not seeing those guys anymore, it's officially a brand new team. Have you already mentally made that transition to, it's a new year and I'm one of the guys who's running this thing now, I'm, I'm one of the point people here. Yeah, I've, I've made that transition the day after the suit, uh, I said so, Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> so uh, the day after the Fiesta Bowl, we kind of had uh, group text going around throughout the team that this is a new team, this is a new year. Uh, a lot of things from last year got to change. Make sure what happened last year doesn't happen this year uh, on the, in our stadium. So, uh, yeah, we made that treasure back in January. So the summer isn't really a, a fresh start. It's sort of a continuation from February. Oh, it, it is a fresh start for our team because we're coming off spring ball, we're coming off classes where when in the summertime you don't really deal with your coaches as much. Do with the weight staff a lot. They're really hands on with us throughout the whole summer. Did uh, Coach Mick send you with a bunch of workouts? Now he sent us with a lot of bands, so we'd be out there uh, stretching a lot and uh, doing like some beach workouts or whatnot. But it's nothing compared to the stuff we do at Wade. Do you have a new appreciation for you know nobody wants I, I wouldn't say nobody, but the early morning workouts and stuff like that. You know, having to get up and do that. Yeah. Um, but then seeing what you know they're going through in Jamaica and whatever, does it give you new appreciation for the opportunity here? Yeah, it gives you a new appreciation because you know we complain sometimes about working out at 5:30 in the morning, 5:45, uh, 6 o'clock. But you know some kids in the world are dreading waking up at 8 o'clock going to school. So you know I never dreaded going to school. I always had fun at nine years old going to school and being around my friends. But uh, it makes you want to not complain as much as you did before, so that's what I'm trying to work on also.